Hello and welcome to scrapbookingstation.com. In this video we're going to be playing with embossing paste. So we're going to be taking all of these pastes out for a spin to use in your scrapbooking. So without further ado, putting the camera over my shoulder, we'll get started with the background for a okay. scrapbook layout. So here we go with a sample, which is why I think this stuff is so scrapbooking friendly. I've got this gears template. And what I've done is I've put my two scrapbook pages together, not necessarily square. I've stamped it with basic black. This is basic gray uh, cardstock. And now I'm going to use this to hold this down. But the thing I like about this embossing paste... Oh, hold on. i got a right. spoon. i got my sweet and low spoon so I can scoop this out. And once again, I'm going to put it on my straight edge. But what I was saying is the thing I like about this embossing paste for scrapbooking perspective is that you can cover a lot of area in no time at all. So I'm going to put some of that on there. And I am going to try not to go too far out of the realm. And I'm not worried about the sharp edges at this point because I will show you here in a second. Once I lift this up, I will scrape that this way. And I will scrape that this way. But I'm concerned about this bottom edge because I want to continue with this template and this pattern further down. So once I have that, I'll kind of smooth that like I want it. What I'm going to do now is lift this up. So I've got my gears, and I'm going to pick that up so I don't get it on my craft table. And I've got, oh, I've got a little stickle brush. And I'm just going to try and help that along a little bit and this stuff you can stamp again so once I've got this how I want it I'm going to well first off I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to bring the template down and do some more so I'm going to wash this all off let this dry and we're going to see what the finished result is Okay, so I completed going all the way down the page, and it's dry, and I just want to mention that these little things that stick out the edge, um, this stuff can be uh, sliced in your paper trimmer, so you can just trim those off when you're ready, and this is about as far as I'm going to go with this. While it was drying, I printed out a bunch of photos, and so once I figure out how all these are going to position and place, I will probably do a little more pasting on the other side and the only thing I wanted to mention is that I did when I stamped it I had actually intended to be able to either use them this way or this way and then realized I used unidirectional stamps so that's something to keep in mind as well I can actually turn the clock upside down or some of these phrases that I have on here okay so I'm gonna work on that and uh, in the meantime I've got a couple photographs that I'm going to talk to and then when I get back to video, uh, we'll be working on a chalkboard, or at least using paste to create a panel. Anyway, I will see you back here in a little bit. This first sample we're looking at pastes are blendable with each other. So this is silver and white, and then textured with a fly swatter. And then you can also create custom colors using ink refills, and you can mix them totally to make them consistent or leave them streaky. Very cool. And these are just a couple examples of a different color using some templates. Then we get to the fact that it's super flexible. That snow pile on the left is pretty thick and it does not crack even when totally dry. And then you can imprint images with your stamps. So I left it wet pretty thick, put the stamp on it, and then came back with some stays on. And then you can layer the paste so you've got black and then a thin layer of gold and then did the same thing with the stamp impression. Okay, now we'll go back to the video and uh, creating a panel. 
Okay, for this black paste, I want to create a nice smooth panel. And so all I've done is first off secured my wax paper and my grid paper onto my work surface. And then I've got a double layer of uh, just computer cardstock to kind of lift it up off of the panel which I'm trying to cover. And now I'm going to take out some of this embossing ink and put it straight onto my straight edge. And I was actually going to make a bigger piece but I could not find my six inch ruler to use as a straight edge. Now I'm going to go ahead and put a pretty liberal amount on the edge of this because I'm going to try and carry it across to the end. And you can you know, just try and freeform it, but I think what's going to end up happening, oh, nice and smooth, is that it's a lot easier to control the height when you've got your edges. But now I'm just going to let that dry, and that's how easy that is. And like I said, I'm going to put this back into the jar, and, um, I would have done a larger piece if I could have found my 6 inch ruler. I didn't want to use a 12 inch because I was a little bit bigger than I wanted. I'll pull some of this off as well. Waste not, want not. Anyway, we'll keep going here in a second. Stamping on this depends on what the results are. Now of course black cardstock is smooth and you've got, I mean if you want a chalkboard effect this black paste is great. Anyway, I took that other photo of the copper. I am still waiting for my metallics to dry, and then I'm going to take you through a couple techniques with that. So just finishing up with the chalkboard, I created this card design, School Days. Um, but I think just this focal point would be great for scrapbooking if you've got uh, pictures of that sort. My kids are older, so really don't have much need, but this would make a great little label for your scrapbooking, even with the letters surrounding it. So anyway, I've got a movie on that, uh, a video on that, and, and also, like I said, a card kit on Etsy. Now the other thing I wanted to test with these pastes is whether I could stick them in an embossing folder and whether they'd crack or not. But once again, very flexible. Now the only problem is these narrow strips, you know, I think I'm going to stick with that because it was really hard to create a panel much wider than this. And if you saw that photo, you notice that it tends to buckle. So it's not so much a problem with the paste drying, you can manip manipulate the paste as much as you want. The problem becomes when the cardstock gets wet, it wants to buckle. And so with this border, you know, I think that turned out great and I will use that. But if you go to much larger a panel, it really becomes a problem with trying to get a nice flat coat. Anyway, I hope you give these pastes a try. They're a lot of fun to play with, and um, as far as that scrapbook layout that I started, I'm probably going to do some piramage effects on that, so keep an eye out for that, and you'll be able to see that how that finished layout turned out. I hope you took something away with you you can use in your own scrapbooking. Thank you for watching.